More than 60 years ago, Norbert Weiner wrote that to be successful in this new world, either the engineers must become poets or the poets must become engineers. I'd argue that this was always the case in theatre. I'm the Director of Digital Development at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and it's the first role of its kind within the organisation. And it's been specifically created to bring together artists and technologists, poets and engineers, to imagine the future of theatre. It came from an interest in the possibilities created by the profound changes and new technologies of the internet age. This is the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, the RST, in Stratford-upon-Avon. It's our home, and every night over a thousand people come here for a shared experience with, and bear witness to some of the best storytelling technology there is, the actor. But the actor at the heart of the play has always been supported by other technologies. The poet and the engineer have never truly been separated, and my role is a new one but has always existed in different forms because candlelight was a technology, electricity was a technology, the printing press was a technology, and we wouldn't have or be able to perform Shakespeare's, um, Shakespeare's plays today without that technology. Technologies of the time brought into the theatre and used as part of the theatre making toolkit. Now, as we encounter new technologies, we see the new possibilities. The Royal Shakespeare Theatre I'm standing on today, here, right now, is not a photograph. It's a millimetre accurate scan captured using cutting edge LiDAR technology and rendered into a games engine. We can do anything we like with this image. Our theatre is now not only a 3D space in real life, but a virtual 3D space too. This stage, a smart stage I'm standing on, means that we can connect and broadcast in 3D space too. Scanned in a pandemic, now more than ever, we see the desire for connection, liveness, togetherness and storytelling. What a virtual 3D space allows us to do is not only to broadcast, but to redefine how we be together, working alongside each other with all the tools that we have to make theatre. But back to craft. Another great quote is by Arthur C. Clarke, who says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And look no further than The Tempest, Shakespeare's last and arguably most magical and innovative play. In 2016, it was the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. And in the years leading up to it, our artistic director, Greg Doran, wanted to explore The Tempest through a 21st century lens. And I began my research in the place where we mainly go for our ideas now the internet. During my search, I found a clip from the Consumer Electronics Show keynote speech from Intel CEO. It was a small two-minute YouTube clip, easily findable for those in the industry, but not, no connection with theatre. And watching the clip, I saw the promise of a virtual and physical world come together using augmented reality. I saw a whole whale on a screen and then a whale leaving the screen and moving over people's heads in the auditorium. It was technology as magic. The people who were in that auditorium were trying to touch the whale above them and gasped in excitement seeing it transform. And it made me think about all those people who had heard a voice on a phone for the first time. All those people who ran out of the cinema thinking the train was coming towards them. Our relationship with the promise of magic is completely connected to the promise of theater. I wanted to see what would happen by bringing this new technology into our theater to create a virtual and real world come together and shift ourselves from the idea of digital as another space. Knowing no one at Intel, I emailed their customer service website and waited patiently for a response. And two weeks later, I had a reply with an email back saying, let's talk. From a call came an invitation to Stratford-upon-Avon, and from that invitation to a week-long visit, a team of poets and a team of engineers, both innovative, both visionary, but talking two different languages, meeting, eating together, and finding ways to imagine together. It was an Intel engineer who said, do you know we have enough processing power to render a character in real time? And in that moment, we didn't know what this meant at all. 
I mean, we couldn't conceive of the possibilities and we literally didn't know <laughs> what he meant. Processing power, rendering, these are not words that we were using in our world. But as he explained, we realized that this was puppetry, the movement of an actor driving a digital avatar in real time, a new way to represent that most magical of characters, Ariel, and a new way to bring to life the magic of Shakespeare's imagination. Two years later, that vision took flight. 336 joints in the avatar, the equivalent to recreating every joint in the human body. 200,000 files running simultaneously to bring the avatar to the audience. 50 million times more memory than the first flight to space. So many tiny challenges solved through the creativity of two teams. What we, pro what we projected, what would we project onto the avatar? We tried some of the most high-tech and expensive different solutions, and at the end, we used simple technology of the double lay layering of a mosquito net. Those two worlds coming together made 140 performances, reaching over 100,000 audience members, broadcasting to over 500 cinemas, and more importantly, a contribution to the toolkit available for future makers of cinema and theatre. But more importantly, we had welcomed a new technology that crossed generations that brought them together. New audiences came in with the technology and went away with the Shakespeare, and our current audiences came in with the Shakespeare and out with the technology. And that was the start into our worlds where we were creating with our 21st century engineers, the coders, the programmers, developers, riggers, 3D modelers, motion capture artists, the new communities that we take with us now and imagine on this 3D virtual stage. Because the embrace of new technologies and forms has always allowed us to be more open. And this is the seven ages of man seen from As You Like It, performed for the first time a volumetrically captured actor performing the scene with a digitally engineered set created on your tabletop. Because the embrace of new technologies and forms has allowed us to be more open to experiment on different digital platforms and thus to expand and diversify our thinking about our audience and conversely to understand and harness our potential. It has shown how theatre is a driving force and can work alongside those who are solving problems to imagine and enable communities to stay open to the new tools and technologies that are taking us there. So let's converge this craft and connection, accelerated by a disruption of a pandemic. We are far faced with a stark adaptation and new forms of connection. Some are born from necessary functional means, but as theatre makers, how can we get a sense of togetherness when we are apart? What if our audiences could breathe or gesture or the data from their own movement or mood, many aspects of the nuance of connection in our real worlds connect with performances virtually. What if we pushed our technology to unlock new possibilities of the internet, to expand reach in real time, push server power to service our connection in real time, and move from puppetry and character to real time connected worlds at scale? This is starting to happen. This stage becomes our stage and our stages connect to become our world and the promise of theatre is its liveness and being together. But what if you could choose your stage, make home your destination, not just as a sat-nav instruction, but as a space for live performance? We are experimenting with the feedback loop between the performer and the audience and experimenting with virtual co-presence in how we can breathe together and be together and experience together. The UK cultural icon David Bowie once said, tomorrow belongs to those who see it coming. Because it shouldn't just be the engineer or the industry representative at the key ES keynote holding the conversation about the future. Our future's connected, it's inclusive and it's together. Where we go, will go with the technology, will be with our poets and our engineers and our audiences and our communities. To those who can see the technology differently, 
and work with the engineers to imagine and those who are open to explore. Our processing powers are more than faster, better, smarter. They are magical. <laughs>